welcome to another Unwinding with Fiber and Fabric, and Happy Thanksgiving. Rather than spending this week preparing food for a feast, <laughs> I spent some time outside helping my husband with a construction project, and I spent the recovery from that in my office preparing some graphics and digital um, items for upcoming projects. Let's just say that even though my main purpose in the construction project this time is hold things in place, all of that up and down on the ladder, <laughs> it kind of, kind of made it wise for me to spend a few days at the computer rather than running around and doing other kind other things that might wear me out. But I do have a picture of my husband and I just as we finished getting the last rafter in place. We were able to manage um, a few of the, the roof um, pieces that were smaller and a little lighter. And then it was just throw a tarp over the whole thing because we had rain come in and we're, we have plans to have a friend come and help my husband with the rest of the heavy lifting. <laughs> Leaving me, of course, to be able to work a little bit more on the crafts. <sighs> And yes, I have had a wonderful time. I I've I have expanded my knowledge and understanding how to do of how to do um digital graphic art. <laughs> and I'm really proud of myself because there are some things that I would have never even understood that could have been done <laughs> until this week. And I've had a lot of fun. So, I can't show a lot of it yet because I'm working on gifts and of course <laughs> those have to wait but I do have a little bit of that a um, little bit of my effort to share in addition to this week's English paper piecing block and this week's Christmas gift craft that can be both done high-tech with like something like a machine machine embroidery or traditional with crochet or a standard sewing machine. So let's just go ahead and dive in and start with the, hmm, hmm. let's go ahead and start with the, um, the thing that's been having me busy in the office. I have been playing with um, taking digital graphics that uh, the free ones, oh my goodness, uh, just love, uh, <laughs> I just love how many wonderful free high resolution graphics you can find. So I've been taking some of the free to download graphics. Um, two sites that I use are um, Digital Bundles and um, Creative Fabrica. I think I have those right. I'll have a link in the description below. So I've been using both of those sites, and if any of you have other good sites that have um, graphic content with lots of freebies, please leave a message in the comments and let me know because it is it is just wonderful. Lots of things to play with. And so I have a, a Christmas gift project that I'm working on, and I wanted to do a test to see how sublimation, because of course I'm now playing with a little bit of sublimation to see how sublimation works um, and what fabrics I wanted to try to put it on. And I've made zipper bags before, even a few just episodes ago, I showed some little tissue bags. But this is, uh, it's about seven and a half by seven and a half inches finished. And it's an in the hoop embroidery bag. And I was trying to figure out a way to do it with materials that I have on hand that are both durable, but um, that are more craft oriented. I have done these kind of bags with um, heat transfer vinyl. Um, I have, I've done it with fabric, but this is sublimation and it's on quality <laughs> cutaway stabilizer. Now, when I say quality, there is oftentimes a, a, a range of um, cutaway stabilizers, but this is a fabric feeling cutaway stabilizer. It's what I use in the hoop when I, um, when I 
when I do other dense machine embroidery, it is, it feels like fabric, but it is a non-woven, clearly a polyester, some sort of, you know, nylon or polyester. It took the, the dye very well. And you can buy it in rolls, you can buy it in sheets, you can, um, so for the crafter, so if you're wanting to try different types of crafts, it's a wonderful stabilizer, it can be used for a number of different things. And I like a nice medium weight cutaway stabilizer that if you're lucky and you buy, because <laughs> some of them, they need to be pre-shrunk. But I got lucky and one of the, um, my most recent purchase of cutaway stabilizer you know, the Amazon um, spin the wheel and see what you get this time company type thing. But this one does not pre-shrink. This one doesn't need to be pre-shrunk. I can put heat to it. I can put steam to it and it, it doesn't, it doesn't budge. So this was the perfect base for this. Now, this is actually two <laughs> digital pieces of art that I've overlaid on top of each other. Now put it in close and you can see. Now you can kind of start to see up here a little bit, but I'm actually thinking all of the extra layer is, um, some of the extra layer that's there is um, in the seam allowance. So by layering different, uh, different images, different colors, playing around with washes, I did that. And I'm very, very pleased with it. I wanted to show what it looks like. So this is cut up. This is the cutaway stabilizer. You can see it's, it's not very thick. It's very fabric like it doesn't tear easily. And it's wonderful for the zipper bag. So in this zipper bag, it has a, a liner. I put the, the stabilizer that, that I'm actually using in the hoop. Um, I'm using some stuff. I, I, I tried to use some stuff that I've been trying to get rid of because it has a sticky to it, but it's um, a wet and stick. And I'm not sure if I want to use it. And that's why you do tests. It has a little more of a crinkly sound. Now, if I threw this in the washing machine, which it totally can go in the washing machine, that crinkly of the, wa um, the, the sticky would go away. So I'm not really sure, but I, it was a great test but using a good quality, medium weight, I guess you could use a heavy weight too if you wanted a little more density, um, stabilizer for the sublimation was fabulous. Now I mentioned that to those of you who don't do sublimation and don't do machine embroidery. It's a good product to have on hand if you're wanting to do um, foundation paper piecing. You can trace or print the pattern on this and use this as the foundation. So you can use paper and tear it away. You can use muslin and leave it in. But if you're lo looking to do foundation paper piecing, if you're looking to do crazy patch, medium weight machine embroidery stabilizer is a very good product to have on hand because, um, because it is, it's, it's, it's very durable. It's, it, you want to test it to see if it needs to pre-shrink. If you need to pre-shrink it, pre-shrink it. But it is a good product. So I wanted to share that. That's one of the things that I'm working on. And this is my test to see how it looks as fabric. Now, I did with this, I wanted to mention, I didn't use batting. I wanted this to be something that if it was thrown in the wash, it would not shrink. So I, the, the stabilizer won't shrink. Instead of using batting, I used um, craft felt. And so it should be able to go into the washing machine, come out without any shrinkage. I'm reusing, I'm using up some old zippers. So I actually, let me show this. I actually painted on the zipper. And this is one of the things I was testing. I wanted to have it a raw edge. I want, now the lining, the lining has the fabric folded over. But I wanted to have the top be something that's raw edge. So I knew I was going to either need to sublimate onto craft felt or I would need to do it onto something like this interfacing because I wanted just a raw edge, no folding over, no seam allowances. And that's the key. I wanted no seam allowances 
for the images that I'm using. And so that's what I was testing. So I have to go still and do a couple tweaks because this is a design, this is an in the hoop design I've created and I found a couple little errors in it that I need to fix. But overall, it was a really good test sew. And now I have a Christmas bag. <laughs> I may even keep it for myself. All right, so the next, oh, I am sorry, I bumped the camera. The next thing um, that I have is I want to share about the Christmas craft. <clears throat> and this time, the Christmas craft I want to share, and I don't, I, did, I haven't got my Christmas stuff out yet. I'm pretty sure deep in my boxes of stuff I have something my grandma made that was similar to this with crochet, but I, I couldn't, I don't, didn't have the ability to go and find that right now. My grandmother used to crochet little crochet dresses and, and use these for towel toppers. That's the topic, towel toppers. But one of my husband's coworkers a few years ago, she learning to make do crochet did a crocheted towel topper. And so I wanted to share this. This is a crocheted version of a towel topper. And this is the, the crochet has been added to the top. There's a lot of different patterns for crochet. I'm, there might be some for knit, certainly for sewing um, with a regular sewing machine. But it's, the, it's usually these kind of fun um, craft kitchen towels. You can cut them in half. And you have actually enough to make two towels to hang. So you'd hang these on um, a lot of times either on your fridge or the, the um, handle of your stove. There are little, um, there's magnetic um, hangers that you can get. They're a little rod in a holder that fits on, it can magnetically attach to your fridge. So you can hang it on the fridge if you want it that way. So that's the project. This is the traditional way of doing it. What I've been doing, yes, I have some for Thanksgiving. <laughs> so <clears throat> this is the in the hoop variation and I'm just using little plastic snaps, little cam snaps. And the towel, I wanted to tell you the toweling for this this is a bath towel, a gigantic Turkish style bath towel that I ended up cutting into pieces and you can get a ton of hanging, <laughs> hanging towels uh, with one of the bath towels. So <clears throat> it was, this is, I've, I've done this traditional a number of years ago using a sewing machine and Let's just say it was, it's not shareable on video. Um, it works, but it's not very good. It's actually pretty terrible. <laughs> and it is, I think I'm using it as padding in the bottom of my ornament box for a Christmas tree. I'm much, much happier with the results that I have this year. I did these four. So I want to share these two first. So these guys, the towels are towels my grandmother bought because she also put fabric on the top of towels and made hanging towel holders. And she also did the crochet on top of them and she had two or she had one of these towels left that I hadn't used in another project some other time. So I made these this year using this towel that is from my grandma's stash. So I've made both of these, and this is a fun one because it's dimensional, okay? So I have a, a Santa and a, and a um, poinsettia, and again, the cam snaps. I had a towel that I think I purchased, and it's really interesting because this is soft to the touch. This is some of the le le lesser expensive and very paint-like feeling but I had to put kitty cats on it. <laughs> these are these are towels that were in my stash. They were just not being used. I hate throwing anything away. So these would probably be gifted. But just little, little towels. 
And I have one more to share. And this was, well, <clears throat> anytime you play with faux fur, it can be a bit of a challenge. But oh my goodness, this guy <laughs> with his long beard was certainly a challenge. So I did a little bit of more Christmassy fabric and, and see, he flips up. <laughs> and this towel is a standard, um, uh, it's, it's, called, it's just a standard bar towel, um, uh, dishcloth type that I, um, I ended up picking up at Sam's Club. And sometimes you end up getting really poor quality and sometimes you get a good, nice um, uh, dishcloth feel. But this one I did with a little pleat in a box pleat in the back, and that one is very usable. Not sure how usable I'll have it because he has all of this um, facial hair, but all of them are definitely usable. They can, you know, there's nothing stopping you. It, the not fun to wipe wipe your hands necessarily on the paint that you can feel, but certainly usable. And now instead of having them sit in my uh, stash, wondering what I'm going to do. <laughs> I have them ready for Christmas <sighs> and maybe a little bit of gifting. So I finished these guys. Funny enough, I started with the Christmas ones. I finished these guys up just in time to be able to go out for Thanksgiving. I've been trying to find different type of toweling. The, if you're going to do something like this, just so you know, so this <clears throat> this one wasn't bad. It's a, it's got, it's a good, um, a good texture to it. Very soft. Um, not very, not, not lo too loopy on the back. Um, these guys, the loops on the back of the terry cloth are, and, and I'll, let me show you a comparison between those loops. All right. And those loops, the loops, when you're going, <clears throat> when you're dealing with the sewing machine are not the most friendly thing in the world. And <laughs> that's why I was looking for some other towels. Now, some, one last thing I wanted to share with this before I move on. now that I think about it. Okay. So remember how I said, I like having nice, clean, smooth edges whether you're using an embroidery machine or whether you're using a standard sewing machine, the trick is leaving the entire, sew everything, leave the entire bottom open, okay? When you sew on the back, because the back is actually in two pieces. This piece is folded over for a nice clean edge let me see if I can have one that has a little bit more of a, oh, that one's already glued down. There we go, this one, okay. So a piece on the back and a piece going over it. Okay. I wanted to leave one a little unfinished. So I sew the back on, notice where the towel is. There's the rest of the backing. I pulled the towel through this open slit, lined everything up, stitched then the bottom on. So if you're doing this, and if you are doing this with machine embroidery, skip the step that has the bottom closed, okay? Um, it's so much easier to do this with a standard sewing machine than with the machine embroidery. And that's why I, I played around with um, the design, the, the designs, the original design is from Creative Kiwi. I just skipped the entire last step and instead um, did, I guess you could say, I don't want to, did, did it, you can do it just directly at the sewing machine. I, of course, went and digitized an extra set of stitches, but if you skip that last step that sews across the bottom, you just want it to sew here. Don't sew across the bottom stop the needle before it gets there by putting on a backing okay sewing it down with the bottom completely open but with this slit you can then 
tuck in all your fabrics and go over to a regular sewing machine and sew that down. Then once it's sewn down, you flip that first and then you finish flipping that. And then all that's left to do, I, I usually put a little bit of heat and bond to hold that shut and then I'll hand stitch it shut. And that is a towel topper done either in the hoop or on your sewing machine because you can, there's, you know, you can get, you know, Christmassy fabric, you can get appliques, anything can be done on, on the front. And then when you're ready to sandwich the back and the front together, we just, instead of one solid back, we do two pieces on the back so that we can feed our fabric up. <laughs> so I, I suggest you give it a try if you if you're if you're curious if you want a towel you know topped it's an option if you have a sewing machine I would recommend doing this one with a sewing machine but you could hand stitch it if you really wanted to <clears throat> and of course for all of my yarn friends my fibery friends a crochet and as I said there's a number of patterns out there that you can find to do towel toppers. I have a bonus to go along with the towel topper because of course, if you're giving um, towel toppers, uh, now where are you? Then you might as well also do hot pads. Now, I, 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 so much, I love these hot pads so much. I don't ever, I don't do hot pads that I, I will use, make trivets with the machine embroidery. But these, these are, this is a pattern that my mom was making all the time. I've made it larger. The ones my mom made are a lot smaller. And what I did is I, when my mom passed away, I i had made some of these when I was younger, but I hadn't made them in years. And when my mom passed away, I needed something easy and easy to take around with me. And I was at a point where um, I was relearning how to hold a crochet hook. And so one of the things I wanted to do was learn how, relearn how to make these. These aren't, uh, these, these don't, they're double layer, but they don't pull apart. Okay. They take, um, what I, when I started making them larger, it was to use my, the, the standard ball of crochet, um, cotton crochet yarn. Um, I would, make it so that it used half and half so I'd have two. I don't always put this on it. In fact, the only time I put this uh, a hanging thing on it is for hanging it on the wall. This one actually hangs on the wall. Otherwise, I completely leave that off because I just want a nice large square. This one actually uses um, a variegated, but I've done it with stripes. And it is a technique where after you cast on and it's the, the, the casting on, and you make your chain, you crochet down the chain, and then you crochet back on the other loop. Okay, so you've crocheted, crocheted down, and then you come back on the other loop of the chain that you made. From then, <laughs> and this was the thing I had the hard, I really had to really think about to figure out. From that point, you always go in through one loop, from the top and one loop <laughs> from the bottom. And you're always picking up, so you always have two little kind of V-shaped loops. But once you get past that first round of down the chain and back the chain in the second loop of it, I always crochet, and I have no idea what this is called. So if you know what this technique's called, let me know. But I'd go through, I'd crochet, pick up from the front, and then I'd pick up from the loop below as well. And by doing that, it takes two passes <laughs> to fully get a double thick, but it's bound together. It's not coming apart. And it's how my mom always did them. And so that's how I sat down and tried to remember, I remember and figure out how she did it. So it's just about going through 
the front loop and the loop that's left because once you go around it once and you go through the front loop only you have a loop left over down below so i would just pick up both of them and keep going so i don't know if that's a technique if you know what it's called if you know of a pattern that talks about it let me know but that's the pot holders that i like to make so when you're putting towels together a good pot holder hot pad is always a nice gift too and of course there are tons of patterns dish towels and or dish cloths washcloths dish cloths um different types out there so good solid um crochet cotton i love these these are big <laughs> i'm not going to burn myself the only time i've ever had any issue with burning myself with this type of hot hot pad if this gets even a bit of moisture on them <laughs> if you spill a little bit of water on them if you get steam on them don't grab a hot pan because the minute that moisture hits that top pan, it becomes steam and you can get a little bit of um, a steam, you know, a little bit, it gets hot then. But I've used these now for years. My mom used them for years before and these are my favorite. So I just thought I'd share that with you before I move on to the English paper piecing, get all of this stuff over here off my lap. Now, <clears throat> In last week's video, I showed you my little, my baubles, right? I have <laughs> made a tiny one. I've finished me uh, and yeah, so I've made two of the, 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 I haven't made another one of the big ones in a bauble shape because I love the star, but I did make my itty bitty little tiny one. And another one of um, the medium size. So if you haven't downloaded that pattern, definitely go to my um, blog and download those. You do get the, th the, the three sizes and the variations can of, of fabric can be endless. Now, the reason I wanted to share those again, besides sharing my little tiny bobble, is that obviously it's the holiday season and people are making them and just after i made those in fact i think it was even the day i was uploading that video <laughs> in my news feed someone who was in one of my english paper piecing groups popped up a suggestion about some of those as well popped up a pattern that you could could use and then there was some discussion of a book and yes i ran out or I should say I <laughs> opened up the computer to a different browsing page and I bought <laughs> the last copy they had in stock actually. Oh my goodness. And that was really amazing because they were actually talking about how they thought it was out of print. So clearly if it is out of print, somebody was digging through their, you know, their the distribution center stash and had posted it and I was able to get this copy because this is now another little Christmas gift to myself. I'm going to sit down and do some more baubles. Now, in this book, um, Ginny Beyer has a bunch of the templates and stuff, but they're really big. <laughs> Even the smallest template pieces in here are really big. So I'm going to use this as a design inspiration. All of the patterns that she has in here, I recognize um, from my other quilt books, my other um, historical collections, encyclopedias of, um, let me just show you that. Okay. These are, these are standard English paper piecing arrangements, but she figured out how to uh, arrange them in a way to make baubles. So while I will redraft, and that's actually something that she talks about drafting your own sizes, I will redraft them for my own use and I will redraft them for English paper piecing. But <clears throat> if you want to try to figure out, in, as I show them in the future, how to arrange them into the ball shape, 
you're going to either have to figure it out on your own or buy the book or find the book because it is not just simply a matter of, I'll just do a, a quick sneak. Okay. So this, this is an English paper piecing layout. That is not that anything that anyone has a copyright to. That is just simply an English paper piecing layout. But what she does to then take that and turn that into a bobble, it's not, <laughs> it's really quite amazing. So <clears throat> I am sure that it is something that a person with a bunch of pieces can sit down and figure out. <laughs> but I kind of am glad to have the type crowns. <laughs> So here is the book again, if you can find a copy. I wouldn't be at all surprised if there are people who have put up similar patterns on the internet for different types of paper piecing puzzle balls. I did not search, I did not look. I just got this and went, ooh, okay. But one of the other things with it that I do like is that it, when it comes to doing the English paper piecing, when you, when, when I do normal um, designing of quilts, the software that I use is actually really designed for the flat item, not the, <laughs> the spherical item. And it is really, but it is also something that having a jump start on, you know, the different pieces and the layout, I'm really appreciating the book for that. It's, it's opening my mind to some other shapes that I didn't realize were um, English paper piecing shapes. So if you can find something like this, I recommend it. <laughs> I would imagine maybe there's other people who've done something like this, but either way, thank you, <laughs> Ginny Beyer, a name that I am very familiar with from the quilting world for years. But thank you, Ginny Beyer, for... Um, <laughs> this puzzle book because it is definitely going to be something I am going to have fun with as my treat for myself for uh, the run-up to Christmas, but also probably for my post-Christmas, the time that I take a rest and just do stuff with my husband and I, my family. For me, that's the holidays. My big holiday is from Christmas Day until New Year's Day. That's when I rest. <laughs> so I think I'm going to be resting with this book. So there we go. And with that, let me share you the block of the week and tell you, I once again <laughs> forgot to look up its name. So it'll be here. <clears throat> but we are going into a bunch of blocks that are stars and variations of stars. I have chose, I, 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 chose to have a bunch of the blocks that are coming up during this, you know, Thanksgiving through Christmas and into January be things that were very winter inspired because we're going into winter. So the blocks that I am showing that of course I will continue to do my blocks in, um, in my, um, my vintage fabrics like this one, my hand dyed fabrics. These are blocks that will be wonderful if you're into doing, if you have some wintry fabrics, if you're into the blues and the silvers and the grays and the whites, these will be beautiful, especially in a two color, often, uh, often a two color layout. So I have this block. It will be, if you check the description below, you will find um, links to my web, my, my, my blog and the pattern to download there any helpful information. I'll put the information about this puzzle book um, so that if you want to see if you can search it, maybe you can find used copies of it if it is out of print <clears throat> or maybe it isn't out of print. Maybe they've decided to do a new printing of it. Who knows? But in the description box below, you will find that information. Find this week's free pattern. And with that, I want to again wish you a happy Thanksgiving. I hope you're taking time to unwind with fiber and fabric. <clears throat> I'm hoping that maybe by next week, I won't have a frog in my throat. I have recovered. I have for the most part recovered from my head cold, 
but at the tail end of my head cold, we had in the local area, um, a major fire breakout. And so the air quality has been very poor. And even though we had the heavy rain, I have not completely recovered <laughs> from the poor air quality and the head cold. But otherwise, I am feeling really good. I'm recovering from the up and down the ladder, ready for another day of helping, looking forward to the crafts that I have to share with you and the crafts that I'm doing as gifts. I'm having fun. I'm experiencing a lot of joy and I'm hoping to be able to share that joy with you and with some others in these upcoming weeks as I continue to unwind with fiber and fabric and share with you the wonderful things that I'm trying sometimes for the very first time because this is certainly one of my absolutely new loves of uh, the season, this English paper piecing, but I have to admit, sublimation, it really works well for the type of crafting I like to do when I'm in the sewing room. So I didn't get a chance to spin. <laughs> you can imagine after the construction, I'm still not silk spinning ready, but I will get that silk spun and share, share it with you as soon as possible. Until then, I wish you the best. Happy Thanksgiving again, and we will see you next week. 